to you in practice on Wednesday, you said one of the emphasis, uh, one of the emphasis of tonight's game was going to be running with an overall three point line out in the field to see you guys go out there and execute that mission. Yeah, they uh, they followed the game plan uh, exactly uh, what we asked them to do. They did it. They said they're going to score in the paint. They got some skilled basketball players that can score the ball, and you know we just told them don't panic. We'll see what happens. So we did that part of it, keeping them off the uh, three-point line, and thought we did a pretty good job of keeping those guys off the glass. As a guy who played for some number of teams here, how did you feel to watch your guys experience, you know, a crowd that just amped the storm the floor after a big five run after all? It's great. It's great for the players to see, and that's that, that college energy that, that these kids, you know, go play college basketball for. Um, I want to thank our fans, our fans were outstanding. I think they, the guys just, you know, rode off of that energy that the, the fans, um, you know, brought in to the arena. And it's, it's fun to see, you know, just not to be, you know, COVID, or, you know, not being able to have people come in. And just, you know, the fans are important to, you know, what we do and how we do. Aaron, what, what was the thought for no time out game? You said no time yeah, out. Yeah, what, what, what was the going into not, the, what was your thought process not taking a time out and letting the last possession go? Well, um, you talking about when we had the ball in Dan and got five. Yep. Well, not to give those guys an opportunity to make changes, to make adjustments. Sometimes you, you, you do that. But also on the other side of it, um, I, I just get a little scared sometimes when you got to take the ball out. You know what I mean? You, you, you add an extra, especially with college players, you add an extra layer of pressure for them. So, you know, I feel really comfortable with having the ball in Dame hands at the top of the at the top of the circle and for him to go make a play and at the worst we get a shot up. Um, but there's no time left. Aaron, is this a defensive game plan that right not just this week, but it, did you you know, have you thought about this kind of defensive game plan against Nova going back, I don't know, watching them, you know, you haven't played them in three years, but you know, seeing what they do and yeah, I mean they, 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 you know, they, one of the gold standard programs in college basketball where it's one of those things they want layups or they want threes and it's, it's been their strength for such a long time. They got some potent three-point shooters and so you got to decide how you how you want to go down. Is it, is it by allowing those guys to take and, and make threes or say, look, they might shoot 48% for, for the game but only two for seven from the, from the three-point line. So I think I'll take that if, if we're looking at the analytics. But on the other side of the two, to combat that, we have to be able to score the ball. And I think with having Damian out there and Caleb you know, being back and Zach out there being a threat, I think that helps our cause and Jamil, Jamil Reynolds, who was outstanding in the, in the middle for us. And so we got to deal with them on one end and they got to deal with us on the other. Did you know right away that Reynolds was going to be that kind of guy for you guys who impacted the both of you? Yeah, we, we saw him. He still got ways to go, I mean, as a player. Um, but he's been working his tail off, and that's how we saw him. We, we saw him as an interior presence that can give us some, some offense around the basket. It's something that we desperately need. So even tonight, when we got ourselves in trouble, we, was, we felt good enough about going inside to him to settle us a little bit, and we never really had that. So, He's a work in progress. He's you know, working hard, and, and he hasn't even scratched the surface on the kind of player that I think he can be. Can you talk about how both, you know, Jaleel and Jamil are both in foul trouble again, and they both played through it much better than, than last game? Can you talk about how they adjusted and what they did to adjust to stay in the game longer? A lot of that, you know, with the first game, I thought was like first game jitters. Mm -hmm. and, and Jaleel White can get a little aggressive, handsy on the defensive end, but. He takes the challenge of guarding the best um, offensive player. That's not an easy job for a lot of you guys that play basketball. If you ever have to guard the best offensive player, that's that's a long night for you, especially a guy like Caleb Daniels who can score the ball on you know, all three levels. So he, he did his part. And, and the one thing I tell him is just you know keep his focus and just you know wear these guys down. I thought he did a good job of that. And, and you know maybe that helped our cause um, you know, winning this game. With Jamil, we heard all these whispers during the offseason how talented he was offensively, but like defensively and crashing the glass tonight, you know, they, you know, what did he show you? Well, he, he, sh he showed me what he's capable of, but I think he has a lot more in the tank. I want him to empty the tank. He had 12 rebounds. I think that could have been easily 20. You know, he had 14 points. I thought that could have been 20. 
Uh, he settled a lot on the offensive end, and then he didn't really get for his size great post position. Um, so we got to continue to work on that. But I think he can be more aggressive on the defense and offensive of glass. So his mindset has to be, I want to get 20 rebounds instead of 12. And with the post position, can you talk about how important it is, especially for a guy with 6'11", 280, if he can start catching that in a low block instead of 15 feet out, how much easier that will make life for him? It's desire. It's, it's who wants to fight for that position. But I think for him probably being so much bigger than a lot of guys that he played against throughout his life, he get a lot of those fouls called on. You know, one bump, two bump, somebody fall and they call a foul. So to me, it looks like he's just comfortable with catching it and then going to make that move. But it's something we got to continue to work on. Um, you know, two games that he had where, where guys are trying to take charges on him. And, and we just have to continue to work through that with him to help him be better. At that. Did you feel okay when Damien got switched on to Daniels? Like tie game, 30 seconds to go? Yeah, I'm, yeah, Dame's fine. I, I don't mind Dame on the defense of their guard. Um, best players, but we try to keep him away from that because we need him on the other, the other end of the floor. The stat sheet might not show it. Can you talk about you know what you saw from Hotsier once you put him in against that matchup zone, how he handled the pressure without turning the ball, especially as a soft. Yeah, I mean he's you know somebody we depend on his voice on both ends of the floor, and you know it's not his first time, it's not his first rodeo. So he had an opportunity to get some experience last year and, and playing some. Uh, meaningful games for us, and he, he has to be able to recognize if a team is in man-to-man -man or zone. And he's a guy that's capable of making shots, so they're gonna pay close attention to him. And he also has to, you know, make sure he distributes the ball to the guys that can get it, get it done for us on the offensive end as well. And, and after a uh, loss like Monday, is it really that he's straight through the page, or do you approach practice still a different, different message, different mix-up? No, for me it was really hard uh, for the players. Uh, my voice matters, and I wanted those guys to turn the page. We watched a lot of film on it. And it, it's what I said to the staff is we could be this team, or we could be the team that we were tonight, that just get out there, scrappy, battle, figure out ways to win, play against a well-coached team, one of the premier uh, programs in the country, and, and, and come out with a win. So it didn't come to me as, as no surprise, but we got to – continue to mature and we got to continue to be consistent with our habits and our approach and how we approach our day-to-day -day practice and, and, and weight room and, and everything else that involves uh, basketball and winning. Do you think Coach. having a team like Nova up next on the schedule will help get those, get those habits kind of re, uh, refocused in the right work? But... You would like for 18, 19, 20-year-old kids to look at every team the same way whether it's Wagner, Villanova, Vanderbilt, whoever it is. And our approach is our approach, and we'll get to that point. Um, we st we're still a work in progress. We got some kinks to work out, but we got to keep the focus and, and make it more so about us. We're we going to come out, we're going to play our style of basketball and have the opponents adjust to us. What's it been like trying to assimilate core to the team? And, and then it looked like in pick and roll, KB was trying to get them the ball get them into a flow and get them comfortable. What's it been like trying to get used to the new squad? It takes time. Chemistry and just knowing somebody and knowing where they're comfortable playing. It's not the easiest thing to do. I know players make it look easy. It's not the easiest thing to do playing in traffic. You know, when we throwing those guys the ball and guards are rotating, getting up under their legs, it's not easy to do. But, you know, again, it's one of those things where we'll, we got enough confidence in them to, to throw on the ball and we'll keep working at that and, and getting better. Because now I think now when we roll, when you have Caleb coming off a screen and roll or Damian coming off a screen and roll, Hasir, they got to honor that. And so those bigs are going to come out. We knew those guys were going to switch, so we told them to roll to potentially create a matchup advantage where they have smaller guys um, going in there. So I trust them. Catch the ball, take your time, and go up there and take your shot. And with Shane Dizoni, where's he at health-wise? I know this former team, Vanderbilt, is coming up on Tuesday. Where's he at health-wise? And is there a plan in place to try to give him some minutes against the Commodores? Yeah, it, my, my plan was to get him in tonight for some, some minutes, but just the flow of the game and how the game was going, I didn't want to kind of throw him in this atmosphere for this to be his first game. Um, so it could be, be – I always just try to put guys in a position to be successful. I just didn't want to, not, to, not saying that I would put him in and he would have been unsuccessful, but just to, just to 
the feel of the game, the way the game was going. And we, we stayed out of foul trouble to some degree, so I wanted to, 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 to stay with the guys that was out there playing. How long can you guys sort of survive with Zach at, you know, two for 20-something right now, I think, on the season? Well, let's get him out now. Um, he started this way last year. I don't, I don't worry about him. We just tell him to keep taking those shots. He'll, he'll make them. He spent enough time in the gym doing it. I, I, I had to get him out of the gym earlier today. He spent too much time coming in here and shooting, and sometimes it can be too much. So we got to get him back on his routine. He'll be fine. I have no no problems with you know worrying about him making shots. And speaking of Zach, he's he's posting up more. You know, trying to take that fall away jumper. How much of an emphasis has been, that been from you guys trying to get him to take that shot more, and how much has it just that's something he wants to add? To. Yeah, he he's been working on that all summer. Zach's a big kid. He's six eight. He got size advantage. Um, so it's something I watched him work on. I watched him take and and, and make those shots and. He's got to start up adding other components to his game where, where we don't want to look at him as just a standstill shooter. We, when they're running you off of that shot, we want him to be able to put it on the floor, you know, get to the basket or, or drive it and spin the post and play with your back to the uh, basket and become a playmaker from there. Okay, thanks,